Well, this is going to be fun, fellas. I mean, it's the springtime. We got some football to talk about with the crowd gathering this Saturday for the blue-white game at Beaver Stadium. Weather's going to look really, really good. And I want to start just like we do with the show, right? Nittany Game Week, we start about reviewing the game that just happened, and then we start to preview what's going to happen. I want to review about spring practice and the purpose of spring practice, what you're able to accomplish, what you look for as an offensive coach, Jay, what you look for as a defensive coach, Tom, what do the spring practices accomplish for you as coaches and for those players? Well, I'll take the, on the offensive side, you're talking installation. You want to try and try some new things. You know, a lot of times you go out and you, in January, February, you look at t- tapes of other teams. How can we improve things we're doing schematically um, and try those out in spring, see how they work. Um, you want to uh, stay healthy, obviously. And then you want to start to develop depth. A guy like Sean Clifford, you know, how much he's going to get out of his 22nd round of spring practice here at Penn State, I don't know. But with a, also with a second-year offensive coordinator, it's a chance for them to get more comfortable as well with, with Mike Gersuch as well. So I think those are the things you want to come out of spring practice with. It wasn't much different on defense. I think the one thing fundamentally, you know, you want to get really good fundamentally it's a chance for you to spend a lot of time on tackling, getting off blocks, angles, getting to the ball. Because schematically, sometimes you're going you're to get fooled and do that. But the, the things that Coach Paterno always wanted us to work on was things that we could be good at every week, which was tackling, angles, pursuit, doing things the right way, getting off blocks, you know, the proper fits, those type of things. So as we moved through spring, what we tried to do was we kept it kind of just really light just making sure we weren't missing on somebody, you know, who, who was a player. Todd, the, the other thing that we used to occasionally is if we were playing a defense that had some that. different schemes or different challenges, we would take a peek at that late in spring and get it on tape so we could learn from it and have our guys have that almost like a, you know, even if it was a team in week four or week six or whatever it was, we'd do some of that as well. Yeah, and guys, I want to talk to you about motivation. This is always interesting to me. People – don't really understand there's so few games and so many practices. I remember going up to practices in March and you look at the kids, they're working their tails off, they're working hard and you're just going, what motivates them, right? I mean, they're so far away from an actual game on a fall Saturday, but this is where the love of the game comes in and these spring practices. It's also where the leadership comes in. And one of the things you guys implemented was awards for spring awards to identify kids that really worked hard or that kind of thing to reward them. Can you talk about how you keep your team motivated? You have early enrollees coming in. How do you keep your team motivated and keep them sharp and get that full repetition and competition, all that type of thing in the spring? I think we try to do as much one-on-ones as we could in the spring. And then, uh, you know, scrimmages, things like that. They're limited now as to how much contact they can have in the spring where, you know, if you go back to when Tom and I were playing, there were 25 spring practices, then 20 spring practices, now we're down to 15. Um, and there used to be a pillar in the locker room, <laughs> and there was, they would put 20 pieces of tape or how many practices, and every day we'd come in and somebody would take one of the pieces of tape off. So we would see the countdown towards that last one, and everybody was excited to see it end. But I, I think the reality is, is if you got if you got the right group of competitors and the guys that want to be really good, uh, they know that, you know, Alabama's working every day to get better, and Ohio State's working to get better every day, and Notre Dame's working to get better every day. If you don't come out, and utilize those opportunities, you're going to fall behind, not just as a team, but certainly as a player if you're trying to get that playing time as well. You know, Jay, I'm glad you brought up about the old days because it was 20 practices. You could go pads every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. There was no limit on how long practice could be. Now, granted, you had more people on scholarship back then. You had more bodies. But it was a very different time, and it was like a badge of courage if you made it the whole way through (laughs) and survived the spring because they would be, you know, Saturdays up at the stadium where I guarantee it was going to be a minimum of three hours. But then everybody got reps and, and it was a chance that they wanted to take a good look at who they had a chance to, you know, wanted to watch the matchups say, you know, they were going to work on a lot of different matchups. They want to see so-and-so versus so-and-so. Plays were called to watch wideouts go against DBs. I mean, it was all scripted more so maybe than today even. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Tom, as far as players, no matter what the setup is, they want to impress their coaches. So Saturday's game, and I put it in quotes as game, 
is still an opportunity to impress your coaches and maybe get some of those reps. But it won't necessarily look like the old blue-white games of the past, you know, with depth issues at offensive line for, for Coach Franklin, as, he, as he's mentioned. And just, you know, you certainly don't want to put running backs out there and get them hurt, that kind of stuff. So what can we expect, guys? I mean, do we look like more of a seven-on-seven seven drill? we got some young quarterbacks. Fans are going to want to see them slinging around the yard a little bit. They want to see some passing at Beaver Stadium on Saturday. What do you think we can expect out of the actual scrimmage? Well, I think you gotta, if you got young quarterbacks, you know, you got to go out there and put them in as live a situation as you can to see how they react with, you know, 50, 60, however many thousand people show up. And I expect there'll be a really good crowd because people have been waiting three years to come to a blue-white game. And, you know, having gotten snow on Monday and Tuesday of this week, they're going to be antsy to get outside and tailgate and the weather looks good. But I think you want to see what they can do in that environment and how they can handle it. At the same token, um, you don't want to you don't want to put them in a situation where they're getting drilled and all of a sudden they get hurt. So it's always a fine line with that. And uh, and you'll see generally you see a lot of running backs playing. But you know Saturday you know I would look for how does the offensive line handle pass protection? Um, how do they because that's been a problem? How does how are they going to be at linebacker? How are those guys going to adjust because they lost some guys and the pass rush element as well? So I think those are things that I would be looking for on Saturday. And I'd be looking for it early. It happened in the first quarter, the first, first half for sure, because a lot of times in the second half, Jay's you offensive coaches would always put in some razzle-dazzle trick play or something. <laughs> that you would practice in the locker room and then use it. As you know, it's because the spring game is meant to be fun, and it's a accumulation of, you know, a lot of days of work and effort and things, and everybody's going to get a shot to play. But if you're a fan and you're going through the game, you want to watch the, you know, the first quarter – quarter and a half is going to really be the matchup and the things that they want to get accomplished. Tom, you mentioned razzle-dazzle from the offense. Come on now. You know you're going to throw in a wrinkle or two or give something for a young quarterback to take a look at, aren't you? Well, the only thing is once they started that battle, then we would draw them in the dirt too and put it in <laughs> so, and send it in. But it got to be fun. It was meant to be fun, and it was a good day. And uh, it was all in, in, in good spirit. I think in the old days, you know, I think they used to play – for food, you know, the guys that won the game got steaks, the guys that didn't win the game got this. So over the years, it's changed. But I know over time, that's the, a lot of things have been that way. But I, I think that still, you know, the um, what they're trying to get accomplished in the spring, you know, there's a plan. They know what they want to do. Jay mentioned they're going to take a look at some things that somebody else has done. And on defense, you want to see, hey, offensively, can you give us this this day so we can see it? So it's a good give and take, and it's meant to make your whole team better. Tom, you mentioned it's a fun day, and it's really a blue-white celebration, not only of just the football team, but of the whole university and all the athletes. Jay, if you want to talk about the Beaver Stadium run that's happening, and then, you know, some of the athletes, all the other teams, the field hockey team, the baseball, there's going to be athletes out there on display and just to come visit and meet and signing autographs. So it really is kind of a celebration of all things PSU, isn't it? Yeah, I think one thing that's gone on with some of the NIL stuff is, you know, you have the collective success with honor, which we're going to talk about later. Um, and they have an autograph signing. It's going to involve a lot of uh, athletes from a bunch of sports, men and women, and they're going to be there. And it's a, it's a weekend where everybody, it's really become a, a homecoming weekend at Penn State for alumni and fans and everything, the excuse to get back up there. Um, and then the Beaver Stadium run on Sunday is, uh, I think it's now the largest 5K in the state of Pennsylvania, and my mom is the one to put the whole thing together, benefits Special Olympics of Pennsylvania, and uh, that's turned into a massive event. Uh, the first year we had it, a woman, and the, and the finish line is at the 50-yard line, the woman crossed the finish line, and I'm watching her. I didn't run, of course. Um, I'm watching <laughs> her, and she has like a kind of a fanny pack, and she opens up the fanny pack and like looked like what was dirt coming out of her fanny pack, and then I realized it was somebody's ashes. And I looked at her, and she goes, my husband, and she took off. <laughs> and I said, well, you know what? You just got to applaud that. And she's committed to the cause. And so somebody's husband is part of Beaver Stadium every day. Hey, Jay, well, having been a part of that event when that, uh, that one year, that's quite a great uh, – it's really a great celebration for a lot for a great cause. And, and hopefully the weather holds up so they have another great turnout because it's uh, – it's one of the special things that I was ever involved with. Uh, it's an awesome day, and everybody gets to come up there. And I mentioned the players got to wait till the fall for Saturday. So do the fans. 
So it's a great chance for them to come up and, you know, tailgate a little bit and have a little bit of fun. Jay, you mentioned we'll be talking NIL collectives. And we're also, with success with honor, we're also going to be talking about the NFL draft in a Zoom meeting coming up. The Between the three of us, we'll talk about that. But for now, thanks for joining us on Nittany Game Week. Todd Sadowski, Tom Bradley, Jay Paterno. We have a lot more to come here in the offseason.